Hello and welcome to my fourth and hopefully if I can do it quick enough the last part of uh, the tutorial on how to build your own weighted companion cube. Um, again let's just get right on into it. Let's go ahead and finish the coloring. Um, open up your hypershade. Uh, we want to make the external squares the same color as the gray that's in there with the heart. If you look at the reference material, you can see it's actually almost white. Well, here it's gray, and that's just a brighter picture, so we'll go with this. We want that gray, and then it'll be just a little bit darker on the inside. So go ahead to Materials, Maya Material, and go ahead and just middle mouse click that right there. And as we did in the beginning of part two, we combined all these so like I said before you put the color on one it'll be on the rest of them so with that applied let's go ahead and lighten it up and get it to where it's as light as what we hope would be that gray in the center and that looks good to me let's go ahead and get the gray for the center go ahead and create another Maya material let's go ahead and make this one a little darker Let's go ahead and middle mouse click that onto each square undo onto each square because we never combined these. Which if you wanted to earlier, there's no or I probably could have done it earlier, would have made this just a smidge easier, but oh well, it's only a couple clicks. Like I said, middle mouse click onto each one and you're good to go. And that dark looks like it should be just fine. Lastly, let's create one more for the inner square that's supposed to be pink. Um, to get that in there, you really want to zoom in because it is it is just a small gap. So we'll go ahead and apply it. And with it applied, let's go ahead and change the color. Um, I'll go right between purple and red. And on this slider, let's just bring it down to where it looks like it's about the same color as the heart. Right about there it looks good to me. So we'll go with that. And there is your finished weighted companion cube. Um, though we're not done, let's go ahead and render this puppy. Let's make it look good in a picture. So hit spacebar. Let's go into well, it doesn't matter, side view or front view, not the top view. Um, go ahead and select plane, hit 2 for the move key, and let's bring it down just below the cube. Right about there looks fine. Go ahead and hit R to scale it. Bring it out a good ways. Though we're not worried about seeing anything out of in the outer area because we're going to be taking this shot from top down and we're going to have a, a glassy type of reflective material for the plane. So let's go ahead and uh, get the render going. Um, in the rendering tab, uh, go, well, go ahead and click on that. Let's go ahead and create a camera. Yeah, sure, you can take the picture with the perspective, but you know, you may always move that around and you may not always get the same shot. With the camera, you could place it in one spot and forget all about it and just render in that camera and you don't have to worry about it. So go ahead to panels, look through the selected object, which is the camera we just made. Go ahead and zoom out and place the camera wherever you want to place your picture. Well, we're not sure exactly how this is all going to lay out because we haven't even set up how big the resolution of the picture. So up here for the display render settings window go ahead and click on that render using click on that go down to mental ray um, go down here to where it says image size and it has a bunch of presets click on that tab or the drop down and go ahead and click on 1k square go ahead and minimize that now here at the top you'll have you know the grid button you'll have a film gate and a resolution gate Go ahead and click on your resolution gate. So now, for the most part, everything that you see inside the square is what's going to be the picture. So I know there's going to be a, sh uh, a reflection of this in the ground, 
So we don't want to center this because that'll take away from that what we want on the bottom. So I'm just going to set it up just a little bit off center, a little higher. Make it pointing down a little bit. And go back to panels, go to perspective, and go back to perspective. Now the camera will be chilling there. If it doesn't show right that it's sitting right there, it doesn't mean that it's not there. You may just not have it in, you know, the uh, display show camera. You know, I can click that and, you know, there it is. So now we want to place the lights. Now before we do that, go back into the rendering settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the common tab, render options drop that down uncheck enable default light we want to add our own we don't want anything else to screw with it so what we're going to do is add three lights now a key light go ahead and click on the spotlight look through selected pull out you see where the camera is and you want to place this to where the camera will take advantage of you know seeing the object so right above it looking right down will be just fine. Go ahead and change the penumbra angle to 15. Now, I'll be honest, um, why? I'm not totally sure. I saw it done in another tutorial and the thing that was rendered turned out great and ever since I've used 15 for everything. Do a figure. Um, for that same light, scroll down uh, if you click on, I believe it's Mental Ray. No, I'm sorry. If you click on Shadows, scroll down, you'll come up to Ray Trace Shadow Attributes. Use Ray Trace Shadows. Go ahead and increase that to about 15. Ray Depth to about 5. Alright, now let's go ahead and add two more lights click on or go ahead and click and make another one click through selected now we want light coming from a different direction and still illuminating the cube so we're gonna go ahead and shine at it right here we don't want this as bright as the key light so if you go ahead and click on where are you oh there it is I was just scroll down go to intensity it's going to be a default 1.0 go ahead and drop that all the way down to 0 0.50 drop it by half we don't want it to steal the light or be as intense as the key light it would defeat the whole purpose of having a key light let's go ahead and create one more light look through selected and we're going to go to the opposite side of that light we just created go ahead and drop that down to 0 0.50 now we're not going to worry about shadows for these last two lights actually now that I think of it what we're going to do is we're going to make them not even see the plane at all so if you go down go up to window relationship editors light linking light centric you'll see we have all three lights the first one we're not going to worry about the second light you'll see in this box on the right everything that's highlighted is everything that this light is going to affect and reflect off of or have something to do with you'll see right here we have P plane 1 which is our ground plane unclick it same for spotlight 2 unclick it we do not want them we just want them to light up the cube that is it go ahead and close it now let's go ahead and make a test render go ahead to the open render view Oh, like a previous one I've already done. Um, click on render, go to render camera one. That's more or less what we're looking for. Go ahead and click on little box to save it. Now you see we don't have that reflection yet. Let's change that. Hypershade, DGS material. Go ahead and click it. Go ahead and middle mouse click it right on top there. Now before I move around, since I'm still in the spotlight, we don't want to move it around. Go to panels, perspective, go back to perspective itself. Now you can move around and see everything and not have to worry about moving anything. 
well, I mean, you can click on something and move it, but that takes a few clicks and you can easily undo that. But we want to keep the lights where they are, camera where it is, everything where it is. So we went ahead, middle mouse clicked it, dropped it on top of the plane. With the attribute editor of it up, let's go ahead and drop diffuse all the way down, glossy all the way down. With specular, bring it up to about uh, just before half, maybe a third. Um, that'll keep it all dark, but give it a decent amount of reflection. So go ahead and bring up the render view again and re-render what we just did. Now we have that nice little reflection at the bottom. Now we can make this a whole lot clearer. So minimize out of that. Go to quality. Uh, ray trace, scaline, scanline quality, max sample. Let's rise that up to three. Multi-pixel filtering, go to Mitchell, indirect lighting, click final gathering, and go ahead and go up to about 250. Final gathering tracing, 10, 10, and 20. Oh, sorry. 10, 10, and 20. Close, and this should about do it. This may take a second, so I'll go ahead and pause the video, and when it's done, we'll come back to it. And there's our finished cube. Turned out pretty nice. Um, yeah, uh, for the most part, that concludes concludes the tutorial. Um, any uh, comments, suggestions, complaints, whatever, feel free to leave me uh, a message or anything in the comments. Um, other than that. Uh, Hell, hope you guys enjoyed uh, doing this as much as I enjoyed putting it together. And, uh, heck, if I get enough good feedback, maybe I'll put another tutorial together. Uh, maybe possibly this nice little guitar I have in the background here. Uh, that was actually a first try kind of thing. And it actually turned out pretty nice. So, uh, with that, um, thank you for watching, and, uh, till next time.